Philippine news today. Please subscribe and then check notification box to get all breaking news alert. That's true in this liberal's entire life there's just one major problem. Anti-Trump factions on both the left and right sides of the equation have been railing against the president's use of Twitter since the Republican primaries. They have literally tried everything to stop him from utilizing this social media outlet. The latest stunt by the perpetually outraged is that President Trump has blocked them on Twitter. As a result, the Knight First Amendment Institute sent a letter requesting the users be unblocked. One of the blocked Twitter users represented by the Knight Institute, Holly Figueroa O'Reilly, openly threatened a lawsuit against the president in an article in the Washington Post. Another blocked Twitter user Nick Jack Pappas explains his reasons for filing the lawsuit, stating Dash. I'm suing President Trump with six other individuals because I believe that in blocking us, he violated our First Amendment right of access to a public forum. He violated the constitutional rights of others to hear our views. Among us are writers, professors, singers, veterans, and surgeons. Our voices have been silenced and we've been locked out of the room. Compared to the mountain of worries brought about by this administration, I know that my interaction with the president is only a pebble. But pebbles roll and grow. They start avalanches. By silencing the smallest voices of dissent, he's creating a precedent to silence more. Those who scoff at the lawsuit say I can still see the president's tweets, all I need to do is log out of my account. Sure, I can't reply directly, but I can still respond to my followers. But that's not enough. It doesn't matter if we can still read what he says. What matters is that we are denied the same access as other citizens. And now there is yet another precious snowflake that claims her career has been ruined simply because she has been blocked by Trump. Rebecca Buckwalter Posa wrote an article in Fortune magazine entitled Trump Blocked Me on Twitter and It's Costing Me My Career. Apparently, Posa works as some sort of political legal pundit and her article is a diatribe on the horrendous impact Trump's Twitter block has had on her intellectual life. Yet no one has ever heard of her before now. Peculiar that but I digress. Posa states in her article dash. Most of my writing is about the Trump administration. In fact, my mandate from Pacific Standard is Trump and the law. On Twitter. The bulk of my recent follower growth and new relationships with others in the political legal sphere have come out of responding quickly when the president tweets and engaging the threads of conversation that flow from those tweets. So when President Donald Trump blocked me in June, apparently for suggesting that Russia influenced the outcome of the 2016 election, he harmed me professionally. Even though I knew it real Donald Trump was important to my career. It still took me at least a few days to recognize how being blocked by the president on Twitter would affect me as a public intellectual. Dot. Gone now is my ability to participate in the timeliest and most robust conversations around law, policy, and politics on Twitter, those around the president's tweets. Taking part in these exchanges was an ideal way to stay current on not just facts, but new ideas. These threads make up the marketplace of ideas in which my peers and potential employers, colleagues, and audience are present and participating. I've been forced out and have no meaningful way to rejoin them. Dot. When it comes to Twitter, I thought my fights would be confined to threads and direct messages. It never occurred to me that I'd end up in court. I can't say I'm glad I have, but I am proud to stand up for the right to free speech which is essential to not only to individual people, and entire professions, but democracy. Each day my appreciation grows for the magnitude of what I am part of. How I respond to being excluded from the president's Twitter may be more important than anything I've ever said on Twitter. Beyond being a self-important, egotistical, pseudo-intellectual twit of epic proportions, it might be stated that an alternate